Hello and welcome to Pleasant Times on Linux. Good day to you all. Well, good evening in my case. It is nearly midnight on the Sunday. Anyway, what I'm going to talk about today is my open box, but this is not the creator's edition I did uh, a couple of weeks ago. Uh, this is a more run of the mill stuff, so I'd like you to take you through it. Uh, I know it sounds a bit bored of me talking about PC Linux of this all the time. I am going to do different distros as I promised in the past. Um, yes. So anyway, uh, what I've done is I've started the boot process already into the live environment. And it's asking me for the keyboard. Now I should have, and I do, <coughs> have the guest editions already pre-installed. Okay. We'll go to the installer. I'll just make that a bit smaller. There we go. Uh, why it opens full screen, not sure yet. It's some of that I need to work on, I know, but I've left it for now. The installer works fine regardless. I'm actually replacing uh, a previous build of this. And so I'd like to take you through it. This isn't released yet. I still got a couple of things I want to do first. but so far so good I could have took you through what's on it from the live but I wanted to show the installer as is uh, I will be doing a video because on one oh, I think it was on the Biddle group on Telegram where uh, a friend couldn't seem to choose which EFI partition you could do it to go up to and I'm pretty sure you can and what I'll have to do is um, although this isn't a <coughs> new EFI hybrid ISO um, I'm actually using the legacy version of uh, Openbox not the EFI And I'd have to install more than one operating system with an input, use two hard drives or whatever. Have two U EFI partitions, regardless. And so I could choose one before the install, probably using GParted or something. But I'm not 100% sure you can from the installer using the customize. So anyway. <coughs> That's a video for another day, if I remember. Sorry, this is installing. The ISO is about 1.8 gig. Uh, and as you can see, it isn't taking that long to install. Uh, actually, the longest part is probably getting a group to install. But we'll see. <laughs> I'm hoping I'm loud enough. I didn't check the volume settings before starting this video, so I might have to do over or either just rattle on in Caden Live and put a new audio track down. The joys. I should have done that with one of my earlier videos actually where I was really really quiet. Okay, I accepted the default, I was a bit too quick there for you to see the screen, but it was just saying where would you like it, and it was going to be on the uh, NBR of SDA, if there is only one drive on the virtual machine. So I lay that, okay, and you could say finish and restart your computer, which I will do now, just hit the reboot there. No need to have any kind of uh, permissions to reboot or shut down. That's already taken care of. Right, so me to one, press it once released. Uh, it automatically ejects, there's an eject command in the finger which would eject the drawer of your physical CD, which is why um, virtual box doesn't see the ISO afterwards. So anyway, I'll allow that to boot. Mm. 
Okay, so that's me for my thingy. Oh, and this thing is just resized. I know I can't move that because there's no window decorations, but it's just okay. I will go down to wherever I live. Oops, I've just passed it, so now I have. Dead Ram, GB. And, yeah. Oh, Tis it, you see, actually. There we go, it senses itself. Let's do some passwords. That's for the root account. And everybody knows me as Ali anyway by now. Or Alistair even. And uh, yeah, that's all good. Okay, let's log in. And after I've logged in, I will zoom the screen so I can make it full screen for you. Um, you may have noticed that I have some fading effects going on. So anyway, up in the top left hand corner you can see the trash can, of course you can move it to elsewhere. <coughs> uh, this first icon is the Tint2 settings, the panel configurator. Next to long is to configure your computer. Now this didn't work at one time properly because I made a goof. But as you can see I fixed that goof. And there she is. And of course from there you can do software management. That will open Synaptic. Uh, sharing is for FTP and configure web server. That will bring down Apache. And that will bring down uh, Pro FTP I think. Uh, do not pre-installed, but if I go to configure your computer, it says Pro FTP is not installed, so... So... Uh, configure the HTTP, configure DNS, what I can't think for the network services, uh, social graphical server. Now, the thing about the new ISOs we've been getting will not have the NVIDIA driver. It won't be there. Uh, the reason being there seems to be a conflict between uh, the older NVIDIA cards and new video cards and it is a bit of a complicated setup now where it's just easy to go into Synaptic once you've installed the OS and it, it will use the Nouveau driver by default now for NVIDIA users uh, so you will need to go into Synaptic and download the DKMS NVIDIA for your card and it could just automatically think a simple reboot should fix that. Um, same configuration of course. Uh, the print set up printers, set up a scanner, set up your keyboard layer if you haven't before, and set up mouse or touchpad. Uh, on the internet you can uh, network center, that's for all your Wi-Fi and Ethernet, Ethernet automatically connects if you've got plugged in anyhow. Uh, your Wi-Fi will be shown as well. Now I can show you the network center briefly. It's actually the same as clicking down here. And as you can see, there's the wide Ethernet. You can monitor it, configure it, blah blah. So we'll click out of that. <coughs> host definitions, of course, for any uh, special host files. Authentication. Uh, there's plenty to choose from, you can use Elder, Kerberos, Windows Domain, local file is set because it is actually a local file, you can manage system settings, um, services rather, such as you have a daemon and AT daemon, anything that you don't want running, I mean I haven't got a printer connected so I can tick that off and just stop that service right there, does mean if I do plug a printer in, then diddums, and so on and so forth. That's our mode down and so on and so forth. So I just click OK on that. <coughs> of course, we can open the console, import Windows documents and settings, manage users, manage users on here. So if you want to add a user, of course, well, I don't know, it's just calling test. And that's all you do. You can actually specify an ID. A UID manually if you wish. UIDs are not aren't the same on PC Linux OS as they are on the Ubuntu. Ubuntu starts at a thousand. 
uh, on Peace Linux OS Day starts at 500. UID 1 is obviously root. You can also change the icon. Uh, that's for a different. Um, I'm using GDM. And I do believe that's for either SDDM or something like that. Anyway, the credit I'm using, I just click OK. And the user's made. I have now got them going. And if you want to remove it because it's no longer with the company or it's just space and you've kicked him out, whatever, you can just delete it, delete the home, delete the mailbox, and he is out of here. Okay. <coughs> On network sharing, we got access window shares. Uh, gotta be careful Windows 10. It doesn't like it too much for some reason. Uh, share drives with Windows computers, of course, and access them. Uh, NFS drives, of course, and web dev. Uh, local disk. We got manage disk partitions, which brings up the disk partitioner. And in expert mode, you can do other things, label me, use for loopback no, I can't unmount it of course, no I don't have any more things either but I'll just click done on that and you can share your hard disk partitions of course and so you like share your directories, probably to click and share and all that stuff there we go security, set up personal firewall and configure authentication tools and under boot we have a set of portal login, a set of boot system with source tag grub. Just load it, grub2, as you can see it's on the SDA. If I can change that to even down to Lilo. I'm not even sure if Lilo is installed so that may not work. But anyway I'm going to cancel that, I don't want to really mess about it. You can set it with your display manager. At the moment I've only got GDM and XDM but I can swap display managers here. Uh, you can also accept light DM etc etc you know the idea so anyway that's the Peace Linux control center briefly now you, this is what you want to know ok you can see here I have the Vivaldi web browser I chose Vivaldi over Firefox I've been hearing stories that Firefox has been acting pretty strange with certain sites lately I don't know if it's all true but I thought mm. I didn't really want to go Google Chrome, although I do use that myself, but I found that a lot of the features of Vivaldi in Chrome can be used in Vivaldi anyway because it's all based on the same blah blah, you know what I mean. Um, like using Chromecast for YouTube, it works on this. Of course you can change the theme. Um, just continue, I'm going to skip that bit, but I can use a dark theme because I've got a dark theme on a machine. I can continue that. Just leave everything as its defaults. And finish, and there we go. We're at Thingy. And if we type, uh, I don't know, uh, pc.com. Now we should have no problem getting that up now. There we go. Even though it's a bit tiny, let's bring it up a bit. Oh, my usual. Oh, because right control. There we go. Because right control is the key for. <laughs> I was using the right control key. It's for. It's already owned by um by VirtualBox. I forgot it was in the VirtualBox session. So anyway, twenty nine row. It only said two D. That are kernel two point five point five point two point one. But I'm on five point two point four. That dropped today. That got installed today. I made the ISO today. Oh, and my raw therapy. I didn't think of that. But anyway, I need to install Kodi. Naughty man. So th this is the main thing for Thingly. My open box won't be there, but um, I don't even know if it'll be under the community releases. Just let me have a look if any of my stuff is in the community releases. So this will probably take me to peacelossusers.com. And it has. Now we've got Trinity, yeah my Trinity is there, but I don't believe my open box is there yet. Not unless it's under the open box folder. No. That's fine. Uh, I will be storing it here. Uh, see, I nearly got that wrong. Oh, 
Come on, I need toy. Ah, oh, listen to me. <clears throat> and there's my one so far. Uh, from the... Oh, 19, uh, 2019, the April to the Creators Editions that are done uh, basically two weeks apart there. That's about 15 days, isn't it? Okay, but I do need to... Uh, believe it or not, these two, there's a couple of added programs in the bottom one here, the ZSZ2, but it doesn't come to 2.1 gig, like the difference between like 4, 400 meg. Mm. Anyway, it doesn't come to that between the two. It's more uh, because the compression is different on the ZS G2. It makes it a bit bigger. It's about one point eight or something. It's roughly like another point a hundred megabytes to be honest. Anyway, well, close that down. Being closed with Aldi down. You seen with Aldi. Uh, the file manager is here. As you would expect, got a little open, open DNS how to check there. Why that appears, I'm not sure which is doing it. I think we've already put it there. And see, it's got a thingy. This is a um, PC manifest. I had to think then, but still, yep. That's the file manager. Of course, PPC you've seen. Uh, it's also down there. Um, what else have I got down there? I've got uh, DLX appearance, of course. Uh, I've got Tor Blue. Now, there's an icon thing here that will play you up a little bit. It's called Delta. And I'll show you what, why in a moment. If I open, let me go to Archive and uh, X Archive. You see the icons are quite nice there. Simply. However, if I go to Delta and apply, of course X Archiver doesn't pitch it up here, but if I go to X Archiver now, wow, size of those icons, oops, move screens, the size of those icons, I'm not quite sure what's doing that, I'm hoping someone can leap into that, but still, I'll take, take it back to numbers, okay, uh, also down here, we just clicked that off. Uh, PC money from the file manager of the Valdis down here as well. It's just some little quick shortcuts. Um, you can alter them in the launcher there, of course, and arrange them how you wish. Anyhow, uh, more applications we've got battery. Battery is just a. I'm on the top of your battery. Of course, I'll allow you to hibernate and suspend your thing, but it's just a battery, battery manager. I am on a laptop, which is why it's showing the battery. Battery. Okay, we have hatched up. We've been running some stuff, but I'm still running one. Yeah, 330 meg. At least 2 gig of RAM we got. Some stuff is probably still running. That's okay. We'll close that down. On the more account, we've got the NetApplet again. NetApplet is the one that I showed you in P PC, so. And I haven't got that. Oh yeah, it's just opened up down here. I've got, let me quit that one. But it's basically the same as quit pressing that. Yeah. Um, also under applications, I'm trying to do as quick as I can. Is Secura, which is our um, CLI. I think if you right click, you get some other options here. See colors, fonts, more, blah, blah, blah. Quite a nice little um, terminal emulator. So uh, yeah, I'll exit out of that. Also, a virtual box manager that will pull in the uh, files for virtual box. This program will download and install Oracle virtual box and it will install 6.0.10 which is the latest version and which is the version I am using. That gets updated every time. Virtual box gets updated. And the same goes for the VMware player. If you don't want virtual box, you can choose that instead. Uh, 
um, we've got extra kill of course, extra term and extra term root, which are our venerable more simple terminals. Very cool. Okay, on the archive, I think I got Presario for CD burning. No, bad little thing, you probably complain that you can't find it. Oh, yeah, there we go, it has opened. And for this, what I'm going to do, just to quicken things up, I'm going to go no effects, there we go. It just makes the screen more snappy, there we go. I had everything turned on for some reason. I thought I turned it off, but no, it's turned on by default. Now we have time shift for backups and X archiver for our zip files, etc, etc. That concludes that. Configuration is so much to go through. AR and R, Bluetooth manager for your Bluetooth devices, caffeine to stop it going to sleep. Fugly or computer is the same as the one that's on the bar down the bottom here. Configure your printer, of course, for your print. Daily copy, rather nice tool for uh, creating a US bootable USB key. Basically, they probably complain that they can't find a USB. Yet no USB. So basically, what that will do is uh, create a bootable ISO to USB key. It even does Windows. I am just saying. It has done Windows 7 for me in the past. We have fixed touchpad. Fixed touchpad is a solution for those with a slightly different non synaptic keyboard. So, if I go by one, the Allen Tech, which is the one I need on my Dell E7440 and so on and so forth. You click apply, XML, write your password, and you have to reboot for it to think good. It's a rather nice tool. Close out the way. Um, also on the configuration, G part of the course. Uh, group to splash. Group to splash allows you to change the group screen. The wallpaper behind it is the same as the one you see here. You can change that to any one that you have on your system. So when you see group come up and Plymouth afterwards, you can change all that. HP device manages for your printers. Same fax, does anybody still use a fax? Don't know, but it's there anyway. LibreOffice Manager downloads the latest version of LibreOffice. As you can see, you can install, reinstall, or upgrade local office, and it's 6.2.5. I will cancel that. <coughs> Just a nice little script to get the latest and greatest LibreOffice. Uh, localization manager, Alex appearance I just briefly looked at, nitrogen is for wallpapers, you could change your background wallpaper, but there's not too many on here, two change, just a couple. Uh, we have the NTFS configuration, tool for those who are dual booting or have an external drive with NTFS. The open box menu led so of course to edit your open box menus, although when you install something it does automatically go into applications and somewhere in this list depending on what you've installed um, and I can show that kind of I'll show you what I mean it is just a pipe menu after all um, I have to reload it of course and this is where I find out I've got bloody updates already and I only made this ISO what two hours ago Unbelievable. So now anyway, we'll let it do its thing there. As you can see, my network does suck. That is really the top end. Now just let me go to status and let's see what there is here. Oh, new in repository. What we've got new in the repository? Oh, basically everything is new in the repository. I must be doing a little job blunting that out. Anyway, just supposing I want to G-edit. Here's the edit there. So if I install that, mark for installation, apply and apply. It's only a tiny file, so it shouldn't take too longer. Even with my daily internet, I hope. One, two, one. <coughs> and there we go, the edit's installed. Now, it should be under editors. 
but you'll probably find that it isn't there the first time you log, just leaf pad, right? If I unclick that and open it again, it's just a way me be either being too quick or just the way uh, it, it kicks start something in the background to uh, kick start something in the background anyway to kick it off let's just say uh, room here so I don't really need it there so I might as well just get rid Oops, I can't spell nowadays. Okay, that's that. Um, where was I? I was in the configuration, wasn't I? Yes, I was. Configuration, tint to, tint to wizard settings, of course, the tint wizard. Windows effects. Not sure. Oh, there we go. Special effects editing, of course. Crop shadows, etc. So I'll cancel that off. Ooh, up there, da, 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 da. we got the edge compromise and the edge compromise to start, which is also started off by going to one of these things here. So anyway, that's for that development. We got the icon browser and LibreOffice 6.2 base. Documentation got help. Leafpad is the editor that I chose because it's nice and light. I could have chosen to edit, I suppose, but it just seems to fit in better. For me personally, education, LibreOffice Math. Uh, for tools, you've got Bleach Bit, uh, and the root PC Manifem. Is that a file manager here? Let's so just check, making sure it's all working as well. Remember, this is a beta, so I'm actually testing this as I'm going. We have GIMP. So a lot of GIMP. And this always takes a bit of a while to load the first time. There we go. And I've still got to do, change that to colours. So I've got to do that before I release it. I mean, that's easy enough. You just go to edit and preferences and blah blah and icons and icon thing colour. Oops. Colour. People seem to tell me they prefer the colour to the black and white ones. I don't know whether I should change it, but. If you want to see what version good we're on, it's 2.10.12, which is the up to date one. Also, on the graphics of LibreOffice Draw and Super Scan for our scanners, Internet, uh, yeah, AVP, is that pronounced? Anyway, SSH Server Browser, VNC Browser, Network Center, and we've got Nextcloud, our desktop client, so if you're in Nextcloud Server, I help you. Nitro Share is a really nice um, file sharing program. You install it on two computers, you leave them running, and you can just literally instantaneously send one file over the network to the other uh, without having a server in the middle. It is really nice, and it's to me it's much better than SMB or whatever, just to do it for doing those kind of things. Qubit Torrent is the bit torrent of my choice for this. Rambox, Rambox. Is a multi client um, chat Udama finger as you'll see. Okay, we we'll just close that. And you can choose from like Discord and Clock Tweets, Chat Work. It is amazing how many protocols this actually does. Hangouts, Drift, Ding Talk. A lot of these I have no idea ICQ is that still going really must get my old ICQ number uh, messenger for business messenger for pages etc etc Skype is even in there Steam chat Telegram of course uh, WeChat WhatsApp Yahoo Mail Yandex Mail as you can see there's a really lot of protocols you can choose all from one place and it's a bit like friends except you don't need to pay for it but yeah so we'll close that up and it is a pretty bright 
I'm pretty sure it's a QT um, app. But I'm going to have to see what I can do about that. So, uh, is there anything about? No, I don't want to start it when Windows starts. Any theming going on in itself? No, it's probably a cute app, I should imagine. Let me have a look. No, Chromium, okay. It's actually based with the Chromium backend, fair enough. And it's an Electron app. Did you know I did not know that? I do now, I've just learnt myself. I just know that it was on one of the disk drives I tried, I think it was the Plasma version of Prison XOS. I thought, oh, this is rather nice app. I did not realise it was an Electron app. But there you go. So you learn. I do. What else we got? Oh, and Vivaldi Browser, which I've gone through already. Office, we got to full LibreOffice. I said it was 6.2.5. And it is 6.2.5.2. Um, that's reference. No tools. Uh, is it under customize or is it under? Toolbar clean events? Nope. You can tell how many times I've used this. I'm just saying, not a lot, old chap. Aha! And that just darkens out. Okay, that's fine. Um. Oh, we can darken it from here, maybe. And no. Oh, that's fine, that's fine. I actually don't know what the hell I'm doing. I don't normally use Office for much, I'll be honest. Uh, I normally write a letter or something and I just accept it as it is. Well, I was just wondering if I could die from the friend. Okay, somebody who knows more than what I do will tell me about it. Software Centre is a LibreOffice manager, Synaptic, of course. Virtual box and virtual plan, a localization manager. If you're not an English speaker or you use a different layout or whatever, apart from setting up the keyboard when you first in start the OS, uh, this will change all your localizations. So then we've got Audacious. Audacious is a wonderful media player, which is great. There's a couple of visualizations stuck in there for good measure. Oops. Port audio volume control and the YouTube download uh, GUI. You enter your URLs in there and where to save and what kind of defaults you want to keep and blah blah. Play and like start off and walk down whatever you want. Uh, that the downloader is still in. Um, no, sorry. Uh, the downloader is still CLI if you wish to use a CLI version that's there for you as well. On the video we've got Audacious again for some reason and VRC player for videos, YouTube download and GOY again. So I did notice I got doubles but for some reason that's where they are placed. So anyway, that is my little open box piece of Linux OS. And that's me saying thank you very much for watching. And I hope to see you all again soon. Um, and uh, yeah, take care all. And hope you have a wonderful Monday. On Sunday night. Whichever. Cheerio now.